Church of the Covenant, welcome to this time of worship. I'm so glad that you have joined us for this time of online ministry. Welcome. I want to let you know what our committee has decided as far as restarting in-person worship services. We will start this on June 28th. We will offer two worship services, one at 8.30 a.m. and one at 11 a.m. What you need to know about these services is that they will be blended and that they'll be shorter than our typical one hour time frame. Um, it will also have limited capacity for seating as we allow for social distancing. Because of that and because of the size and restrictions of our own sanctuary, an online registration system will be required. So you will need to register for what worship service you attend. You'll get news about this in the email coming out. I also hope that you've had a chance to watch our online videos that will help walk you through the process of what to expect as we restart in-person worship services on June 28th. And I also don't want you to make the best decision for yourself at this time. If you do not yet feel comfortable coming back into an in-person worship service, that is okay. And I want you to feel really good and comfortable about whatever decision you make at this time. Most importantly, we will continue the online worship services just as you have experienced them on Facebook and YouTube. And now together, let us join for this time of worship as we get ready to sing praises, to uh, share in the words of scripture, to hear the word proclaimed as we join together in this liturgy on your screen. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others. Love is never me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel. Love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, Trust God always. Love always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. We are waiting to unite fully with the one great love. Until then, we have faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Pursue love. Amen. Each week we will hear 1 Corinthians 13 and then three examples from biblical passages describing faith, hope, and love. The second week we focus on how faith, hope, and love help us see a future that Christ is creating in our lives. This can help us see the next step that is necessary to participating in the future that Jesus wants for us. 1 Corinthians 13, 1-13 If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. 
Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to the childish ways. For we now see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And, and now, now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 3. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the words were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible.
Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from its iniquities. Take this opportunity to stretch. Maybe stand up. Think about our times in the sanctuary where we say the Apostles' Creed together. And together let us say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, Since God loves us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hi, kids. It's good to see you again. Today's lesson is about faith. You know what faith is? I don't either. But I've got an example that might help us to understand a little bit about faith. You see this beach ball? What would happen if I let go of this beach ball? It's going to fall, right? You think I could make it float in midair? Uh... I can toss it up, but I really can't make it float. So what makes you think it would fall to the ground? Because you've seen it happen before, and you have faith that if if I let go, it's going to fall again. 
But what if I said I can make it float in midair? Would you believe me? Let's try it. So, you saw the ball float in midair, right? But could you see what was holding it up? No. You know it was air, but can you see air? How do you know that there's air around you? Because you believe it, that it, there's air there. That's what you've been told. And we've just proven that air can keep this beach ball suspended. That's kind of the way it works with faith in God. We can't see God, but we can see things that God does. God created all these trees, the grass, the birds that I hear chirping out here. And we have faith that God, having done all that, can do anything. And he can do things for us that we might not otherwise believe or we haven't seen before. So remember, when you get down, when you start feeling sad, you need to have faith that God is with you and God can help you and God can help you do anything. See you in a couple of weeks. I have been doing a lot of walking lately. Walking is my go-to exercise that I start with when I'm trying to begin a new exercise routine and work on creating a healthier lifestyle. Now committing to any kind of exercise routine or trying to incorporate healthy choices has been a lifelong struggle for me. I may do okay for a few weeks, but then inevitably I let life distract me with other choices. During this time of COVID-19, I felt that I could try to embrace small new changes in my life. I started out with very low expectations. So at first, my walking was just to get out of the house. And then I decided the dog needed a walk. And then it was wonderful to take my toddler on a stroll through the neighborhood so that she could get a nap by being lulled to sleep. This looked like attempting a mile walk maybe three times a week but nothing consistent yet. When we were dog sitting my in-laws little Yorkie, it became necessary to give this young pup more walks because he desperately needed to get some energy out. These walks became more frequent, but still only about a mile at a time. Sometimes these walks have included my husband. Now sometimes I'll even make him walk with me after he's done his required miles of running for the day. But this time of walking has given us a great opportunity to catch up and have time away from our kids. Sometimes these walks have included music and I will neither confirm nor deny if I may have danced a little as I walked, you know, just to my favorite songs. So you might have to uh, do some investigating and ask some of my neighbors if they saw an unusual woman dancing in the streets of Cobbs Creek. But sometimes these walks have also included listening to different podcasts. This is a new favorite pastime of mine because I have loved the opportunity to listen to someone else, to teach and share expertise, and to be able to listen without interruptions. On one of these walks, I got all the way around the circle in my neighborhood, which for me is a marker of just over one mile, but my podcast wasn't finished and I was so engrossed in it that I needed to go further, so I kept going and hit mile two. The two mile walk pushed me to my next stage of engaging regular exercise, which now includes walking consistently five days a week, at least two miles at a time. Now, 
The other change is that I do this for me. What began as a reason to get out of the house, to lull someone to sleep in the stroller, or to sufficiently walk the energy out of a dog has turned into something that I need, and I need with consistency and regularity. One day last week, I hit three miles just because I could. Walking for me has begun a life-giving practice. And this has come at a, a very strange and exhausting time in my life. So I don't know about you, what have the last three months brought for you? What insight, what have you come to learn? What have they meant for you? But for me, I believe that this has been an exhausting, challenging, and transformative period of time that is not yet over. It also remains to be seen what will come of this, and we may not have fully realized yet all the ways in which our world is changing and being transformed. There is newness everywhere. There is also grief and loss, and yet I've seen a remarkable innovation to come out of this experience that we are living out corporately. This isn't just felt on an individual level, but it is throughout the community and our state and the government and our country and the world. But maybe more important is our focus on what this means for the church and for all of us gathered together as a people of faith. So here's the thing. I'm preaching this sermon to you, but I don't have all the answers yet. And I am telling you the truth of what I have experienced, but I don't have all the data of what this will mean in the future. I don't know what this looks like. It's all still becoming, and it's still transforming us. But walking has taught me a very important lesson right now, and that is to put one foot in front of the other. At times, this is painful. At times, it's awkward. At times, my footing feels unsure. And yet at times, this is the most natural way of being. And I can't imagine not taking another step forward. I can't imagine not going on one of my daily walks. So today I want to look at how the work of faith, hope, and love in our lives is a lot like going forward, one step at a time. So we have been looking at 1 Corinthians 13, and we're trying to understand a very familiar passage. So this requires that we look at what happened in the chapters before and after. Context will help us to know what we should learn from the beautiful recitation on love. Because, let me just tell you, it is very tempting just to build a sermon series around the sentimental illustration that we find in verses 4 through 7. Because we all know it and we all love it. We love the way it sounds, and when you hear it, everyone nods their head in agreement because we hear these words together and we agree. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And you would be right to assume that Paul wants you to hear in these words the power of love. Right before this, in chapter 12, Paul is trying to teach them about spiritual gifts. To explain, he talks about the various gifts and how they are spread out among the members of the body. So while the body comes together, just as we do in the body of Christ, we do it and we share the power of these spiritual gifts, the way we each have them, and the way we are putting them together for a higher goal. And that higher goal is to love as Christ loved us, and to keep that going in the world, keep spreading and sharing that love. Paul concludes chapter 12 by saying, Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it, and God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? 
Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. Now this more excellent lay, way leads us directly into 1 Corinthians 13, and it leads us into our discourse on love. But remember, it is specifically because of the strife, fighting, competition, and disagreement within the church that Paul is compelled to rally them around the power of love. Beyond chapter 13, Paul urges his readers to pursue love. Every way that Paul chooses to describe love in this letter corresponds to the issues that he's seeing at work in the Corinthian community. All of the spiritual gifts mentioned in chapter 12 directly relate to every word he uses to describe love in this chapter. Love does not envy, but envy and strife characterize the Corinthians. Love doesn't boast, but the Corinthians sure do. Love is not puffed up, but these Corinthians are. Love is not shameful, as Paul teaches us, and love is not self-seeking, as Paul models for us. Love does not delight in injustice, but some of the Corinthians choose to manipulate the courts and make them unjust. You see, love for Paul is an antidote to the many problems that plague the community, and not only for the things mentioned in these few chapters. So now we can start to see chapter 12 through 14 as a whole unit, and they can be summarized to hear Paul encouraging the Corinthian church to leave their differences behind and focus on the ways in which they can pursue love as a still more excellent way, and in a way that binds them together as one body working together. Maybe Paul is asking them to remember how to move forward, how to see it as a simple step, one foot at a time. Now, it is not always easy to move a body that is made up of different members and different parts, and even harder to get them all moving in the same direction at the same time. At times, this is painful. At times, this is awkward. At times, our footing feels unsure. And yet, at its best, this is the most natural way of being, and we can't imagine not taking another step forward without each other in order to pursue a more excellent way of love. Isn't it amazing that one of the most quoted passages of Scripture is one that never mentions God, Jesus Christ, or the Holy Spirit? Did you pick up on that? It is written so elegantly and is told so eloquently that we almost miss this fact. Or maybe we are learning that we have to just trust in the foundation that this is needed in order to live out these challenging words. For Paul, our capacity to flourish as human beings and our ability to pursue a more excellent way of being as a community, as a church, as the body of Christ, is all realized to the extent that we can live in the love of God revealed in the cross of Jesus Christ and moved by the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's how Paul understood it. And this is the foundation that is given and it is expected, even when it is not mentioned explicitly. To live a faith like this reminds me of our verse from Hebrews 11 today. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things unseen. Sometimes we can't see the next step in front of us. We don't know how, how to get from one step to another. We don't know how to move on to the next place. Now what has happened to us in this time and the circumstances that are surrounding us have taken away our vision of how to proceed forward. But trust me, our Savior sees the next step for us and Jesus has given us the tools that we need through faith, hope, and love. And yes, even when we can't see the next steps and even when we don't mention it by name, still our Savior is providing a way. God is pushing us forward to take the next step together. We need only trust that we are pursuing the most excellent way of love. But friends, have you wondered what could possibly stop us right now? How do things get in our way? What comes in and clouds our vision and makes it so that we can't see the next step? What keeps us from putting one foot in front of the other as we walk in this journey? 
To answer these questions, I came up with a few points for us so that we might be reminded by them and we might be able to live by them and maybe we find a renewed sense of commitment to our faith by hearing them today. The first one is this, redemption and hope come from the same place. Our psalmist today reminds us that in the Lord we have hope, in God we have steadfast love, and this is the only way that you and I are going to be forgiven. Because Psalm 137 says, O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. Friends, we understand that without salvation, we can't possibly see or try or do on our own, and we are unable to overcome the weight of sin in our own lives. Every reminder of this is a profound realization of what it means to hope in God. We cannot be redeemed of our own measure. Any attempt to try to do it all on our own will be the thing that gets in the way of pursuing the most excellent way of love. The second point I want you to hear, I want you to pay close attention to today, it is to connect with others and try. Because this is the one that's getting to me right now. This is my place of struggle, and this is where I'm hurting right now because I know others who are hurting. And I know people feel disconnected from the church, and I, you know what, it's even understandable because of the circumstances we have around us. I know that nothing is the same right now. And we are beginning to dislike the phrase, the new normal. We want to go back. We want it to be just as it was. But life and faith work in a way that we can only go forward. I have never lost sight of the holy and the sacred in this time. Even through all of COVID-19, even when I have learned to preach to a camera, and I know way too much now about video editing, editing software. It is then that I remember in our time of online worship that important things have still come to light. It amazes me still that from Sunday to Sunday, I find that the songs picked by our staff and our musicians seem to have just the right lyrics to go along with and strengthen the sermon. I hear nuggets of truth and profound messages in our children's sermons that are giving some life-giving um, ideas for us to hear in new and different ways. And I witnessed the participation of our church family still showing up to record things and do things. And it reminds me that the body of Christ worships together, even at this time. And I read your messages in the chat, the way in which you choose to greet one another. And I know we are doing the work of being a caring community right now. Still, in the challenge of this time, we may have let things get in the way of being able to connect with one another, our church, and our faith. But it doesn't have to be so. You can still connect. You can still do those life-giving things that draw you closer to the Lord. You can reach out to someone who you've noticed is more distant and carry them along and pull them in and encourage them. Because restrictions from disease, safety measures in place, and new normals that we are navigating together are not enough to take away your love of Jesus and the work of faith, hope, and love in your life. You can choose to pursue God in the way that God is choosing to pursue you right now. You can choose to be open to the movement of the Holy Spirit in ways that you have never experienced before. And you can go into each new day and look for all the ways in which God will show up and God will teach you powerful things right now in your life and even through online worship. So I'm asking and begging and really asking again, please try. Please try again and see and recognize where you have let things get in the way. Please be open to the, the new and different ways and the ways Jesus is still reaching out to you right now because Jesus is still shaping you and showing you a way of life and showing you a way forward even for such a time as this. Now, our third and important thing to remember is that we must never forget the source. Now, one of the Bible verses that I memorized as a young child was this passage from 1 John today. I memorized it through a song that I sang in a children's musical at church. Now, I could do the song and dance for you, but I prefer to read verses 7 through 8 for you now. 
Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God for God is love. Over and over again, this teaches me that there is one source for knowing what to love, who to love, how to love, when to love, and why we love. We must never forget this one source. We must know who to go to again and again to make sure that our well of love doesn't run dry. Never forgetting this source of love as we find it in our Lord and Savior is accomplished by connecting with others in faith, trying to stay close to our God, and knowing that hope and redemption come from the same place. So friends, I have another question to ask you. And it's a challenge, and maybe you need to reach out to help this get done. But you, will you recommit with me today? Will you try again? Will you covenant to draw near to the Lord? Will you say yes to all the ways that you can connect with the Holy and connect with your church family right now? <clears throat> will you try even when it's uncomfortable? Will you give it a go even when it isn't how we've always done it? Will you make efforts to do what is not natural? And will you make allowances? That is, this isn't the church or the faith you have always known, but trust that the power of the Holy Spirit is going to show up in mighty ways and is still transforming lives even in a time like this and even in the midst of COVID-19 and even through online ministry and even through our challenges and struggles, the Holy Spirit is there. So I want to ask you and I'm going to invite you to walk with me let us together take one step forward right beside each other so that we together as the church might pursue a more excellent way of love. Amen. You are now invited to share from your gifts. Thank you for your continued faithfulness as you have continued to mail in your tithes and you have dropped off your pledges and you have continued to give generously to your church. Let us now pray. Gracious and loving God, receive our gifts of self and substance. They have belonged to you since our very beginning. We give them freely joyfully, prayerfully. With them we praise you. With them we celebrate the great power that is your love, a love that abides always, a love that radically transforms, and a love that makes us whole. Amen. go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. Bye.
I love How you serve, I'll serve If this life I lose I will follow you Yeah I will follow you Yeah Light into the world Light into my life I will live for Thank you. 